Hi all folks, welcome to the second episode of High on Android. That's right, we get high on Android every day. So first topic of the day, um, CES is right around the corner. It's going to actually start tomorrow. Um, so Droid Razor uh, Max will be here and uh, they named it after me. No, actually Droid Razor Max um, is with two X's, so... So the Droid Razor Max um, will supposedly have a better screen. Um, I don't know what was that. Is that trolls falling from the sky? Um, and uh, it should, you know, maybe a faster processor. Um, I don't know. Even without seeing the official specs, I don't think it's worth it just yet. Of course, he has hasn't officially started. Um, so we'll just wait and see if Verizon comes with something better. Another big news of the day, um, Galaxy Tab 7.7 .7 4G LTE is coming to Verizon. Um, I think it's not worth it. I, I think it's just better to get the 10.1 version um, with Wi-Fi. Because most people have smartphones, you can tether your phone. Um, it's just a lot of money to pay out to Verizon for uh, extra 4G or 3G on your tablet. So. Android 4 is coming out with a dual-core 1.2 GHz processor. Um, do I think it's worth getting it? If you like a keyboard, um, if you've been following Droid and you like the Droid, uh, original Droid, OG Droid, um, Droid 2, Droid 3, um, Droid 4 is a good upgrade. Uh, it will come with 4G LTE, which is the Droid 4. I really think Droid series, they need to really step it up, um, put like 1.5 gigahertz at least, because most phones are coming out with 1.5 gigahertz dual core. Um, dual core 1.2 gigahertz, I don't know if it's going to cut it, but Galaxy Nexus has 1.2 gigahertz. If you want to really wait for something good, I would wait for the Galaxy Note on Verizon. And what about Asus Pad Phone? Um, it's going to be launched probably um, middle of this year and uh, they're gonna have an official update next month at Mobile Congress. Um, I still think Pathphone is a really early adapter, um, you know, gadget. And I don't know if anyone's gonna actually buy it, so I would just hold on until maybe the second release of Pathphone. Instead, I would just try to get the Asus Transformer Prime, which mine is arriving tomorrow, hell yeah baby! Uh, we're gonna have an unboxing of that video. It's still number one. It comes with the first quad core. And while talking about Android tablets, um, Toshiba has officially unveiled their Toshiba Excite tablet, which is supposed to be even thinner than Asus Transformer. Now, do I think it's better than the Asus Transformer Prime? No, because it doesn't come with a quad core processor. So that's another gadget I probably wouldn't get because um, Toshiba is still early in the stages of making Android devices. Um, their Toshiba Thrive was the first one I think and this is their second one. Um, versus where Asus has been making more in Android tablets. So I would still say the king of tablets is Transformer Prime um, Quad Core and uh, if you look everywhere like the Quadrant scores and all the N22 benchmarking, um, Transformer Prime's right up there. Unless somebody came up with a tablet that had a quad core and uh, more functionalities, I don't think the thinness really matters here. And AT&T announced their um, Galaxy S2 uh, Skyrocket HD, which is basically a Skyrocket with um, better resolution screen, which I think is pointless. However, they did announce um, Galaxy Note. 4G LTE on uh, AT&T. But if you're still on contract, I would still get the Galaxy Note Unlock version, which comes SIM unlock, so you can use it everywhere. And next we've got Android question of the day. Uh, first question comes from user LicoThern11. Which provider do you prefer, AT&T, Sprint, T-Mobile, or Verizon? Here in the SF Bay Area, um, Verizon 4G LTE gets really good uh, coverage and their 3G. Sprint 3G gets really good coverage. WiMAX is pretty good. Uh, sometimes it's not as good as uh, Verizon. So I like those two the most. T-Mobile here, um, you know, even in my you know basement here, um, it drops to edge all the time. Where Sprint and uh, Verizon, Verizon actually I get, I get full 4G LTE in my basement. Um, and 3G. Sprint, I only get 3G here. Um, for AT&T, 
Uh, I get full a HSPA. Um, it switches between HSPA and 3G for um, AT&T. So it's not bad. I, don't, I haven't tried their 4G LTE, but 4G LTE is supposed to go through walls better, in my opinion. So it really boils down to, uh, you know, which carrier gives you uh, better coverage where you live. So I would just visit all the stores and try out um, their demo phones. Visit the actual, um, you know, authorized dealer locations and they'll have a actual phone that can you can test the 3G and 4G and do a speed test and they'll tell that will tell you kind of you know how fast uh, it is in your area although that's not the complete picture um, the best way to do it is like me I'm just go in your car and like drive everywhere and just check it out that's what I do but you know here in the SF Barry area Verizon and Sprint is the way to go plus Sprint offers unlimited and if you have a grandfather plan on Verizon or AT&T, that's the best deal too. But I wouldn't get sign up for the uh, new contract with 4G LTE. It's so expensive. Next question of the day comes from uh, user Jeremy Lay. Mr. Zetomax, how long do you think the Galaxy S3 will come? Um, I think the Galaxy S3 will come probably by June because um, based on their Samsung's history, they've been releasing their phones like a little bit after summer, I think. And the uh, S3 should be coming here just like last year, probably around pff, October, um, to the U.S. carriers. But you can always get the unlocked subsidized versions uh, if you're on AT&T. Um, so that's what I did with the Galaxy Note, and uh, it's definitely worth it. The international versions have better ROM support, more developers, um, because once you know the the Samsung subsidizes to all the four major U.S. carriers. All that time, during all that time, um, you lose the time to develop ROMs. Whereas the international versions, they, they have like three months or six months ahead of um, all those other phones to develop ROMs and, you know, all these developers. And, you know, there's more customer base for the international because it's the whole world versus just the U.S. divided by the four carriers. Um, so, probably June and, uh, you know, that's a long time to wait. And if you're in the U.S., it's probably going to be like... September. Next question um, from the shop mister. Uh, like your stuff question. How? What does the SIM card contain or a Verizon 4 can the SIM card software be edited? I think he's talking about the Verizon 4G LTE SIM card uh, which is different from the SIM card used for um, AT&T's 3G network um, and the T-Mobile SIM card and I know for the 4G LTE they always have additional SIM cards, so it's. I don't think you can edit it. It's just. Um, actually, I don't know anything about it. <laughs> and the featured ROM of the day is a uh, Crossbones Matrix ROM for Nexus S4G. It's a complete ROM, a uh, complete, completely awesome ROM. Um, I've been using it for my Nexus S4G. It's only for Nexus S4G, but it's a great ROM, ICS ROM. Everything works. Everything's smooth. Just set your uh, set CPU at 100 megahertz minimum and uh, 1.46 gigahertz maximum at interactive X mode and it's just blazing fast uh, it's just good as my Galaxy Nexus and uh, uh, featured comments you're gonna love these and uh, I got my bloopers on there see y'all later subscribe instead I'll probably just get the tr uh, instead I would try to be instead I would try to Instead I would Instead I would try Instead I would try to get the Instead I would try to just get the um Instead I would Good artists copy, great artists steal, 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 steal.